anyone's got a problem right. with that, they get the fuck out of my house. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Hey everyone, and welcome back to Beyond the Controller. I'm Gladys, and joining me once again is Cryptic Panther. Hey everybody. Uber YouTuber. What's going on, everybody? And Fatty. Hey. So first of all, welcome back to the show, and thanks for joining us for part two of this week's episode. Once again, this is just a special, like, one-time thing, uh, because we had so many articles to tackle in such a short time. So this is, once again, part two of the back-to-back -back podcast in the same week probably not going to happen again uh, but moving right into it let's go ahead and get into all the news that we have to talk about panther start us off and tell us about fallout so this is kind of a double story but it's all related so fallout 76 won't launch on steam both the beta and the launch will be available only on bethesda.net or bethesda net if it's called that yeah bethesda.net i guess <laughs> I, I thought it was well, Bethesda. It? Net. It went back and forth. I don't know. I thought it was called Bethesda Net, but I guess I read the article. It says Bethesda So there you go. I should, I okay. should probably read before I talk, I guess. <laughs> so they are not putting it on Steam at all, which is a big surprise. Yeah. Um, there was a second article or second kind of quote leaked after this original PC gamer was that they want to be, you know, more more in touch with their gamers by having it on their service. And it's like, well, you know what? Your other follow-up game is on Steam. Why isn't this game on Steam? And, you know, it's it's kind of strange that that's what they're going with, considering, you know, everybody, it's like the PC games is probably has a Steam account. I mean, if you don't, where, where are you getting your games from? Like, really? I mean, I had a Steam account for years, and I wasn't even gaming on a PC. <laughs> So the, the Microsoft Windows shop. Hello. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I forgot about that. <laughs> and and, and uh, Origin and Gawk and, you know, um, Blizzard, Blizzard, Ubisoft, they're the 4000 launchers. So so now you have to have another launcher on your desktop installed. If you previously did not have Bethesda dot net as your as your launcher. Now you have to have that installed to play the new Fallout 76, which I don't really think is a big deal. But I do think it's odd that it's not on Steam. It's kind of like, yeah, we, we're doing our own thing over here. Fuck you, Steam. <laughs> right. I mean, do I you don't... guys think it's, is it a financial thing? Like, does Steam take a cut of each sale? Oh, I sale? figure they take a, a small percentage. It makes sense. I mean, that's how Steam makes money, right? Right. So I imagine it's, they're just saying, well, instead of giving them 3 or 5% or whatever, oh. we'll just put it in our own pockets. And I mean, yeah. since this game is being, you know, is online all the time, multiplayer, and it being thrown through the Bethesda the servers, it kind of makes sense in a way. So I'm not, I, I don't know if it's if it's really that big of a deal, but some people seem to think it is. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I feel like the people that are, are going to buy this game already know they're going to buy this game. You know what I mean? Like someone doesn't just casually come across Fallout and be like, What's this? And oh, then, yeah, I'll get that. And plop down <laughs> 60 or 80 bucks, depending on your PC. Right, and, yeah, you know, like, play it. just so, about everybody knows what Fallout is. And like I said, if, if you're going to get it, you know you're going to get it. Well, right. So I don't I don't think that they're going to miss much in the way of, like, opportunity for business by not putting it on Steam. But, yeah, it's just a curious choice. I mean, it's the biggest platform in the world for games right now. And just to say that they're not going to do it, yeah, kind of a head scratcher. But, I mean, I don't think it's going to hurt them. No, I don't think yeah. I don't think yeah I don't think overall it's going to be an, an issue. But like I said, it just kind of seemed curious that, you know, what is it like a month out from the beta? Is the beta? I don't think the beta is even announced in this article. I think it's in the other one. There's um, the beta with you know, the beta just around the corner. Then they decided finally decided to say, oh yeah, we're not going to put it on Steam. It's just kind of odd. Yeah, it is. But I mean, I don't know. Yeah, maybe like there's there's some type of metric that they want to track or get a hold of and, and doing it through steam would complicate the process. I don't know, man. Quick, I, I, guess, I, go ahead. I think also like Baker was saying, um, people who are going to get this game are going to get, get it regardless. So they probably don't need steam to push their product. They just decide to rather save that, whatever that cut may be and yeah. have people fetch it from their platform. Right. Cause people are going to get it anyways. People are, it's a, it's a big enough title that, you know, just, it's a big enough title that 
that they don't really need the Steam platform to, you know, promote it. And I mean, that's my guess. I don't know. No, I, I get that as well. But I mean, it's just like I said, it's it says in the article, this comes as a real surprise. Bethesda, Bethesda would obviously like to push more widespread ad- adaptation of its own launcher, but foregoing the biggest, most popular PC digital distributor platform on the planet is a ballsy move. And I mean, that kind of sums it up. But like I said, anyone that's buying Fallout is already probably already has a Bethesda account anyways. So like I said, it's just kind of an odd thing to happen. Like I said, I don't think it's it's there's probably any hidden agenda to that, I don't think. But um, yeah. So then I kind of have an issue with this, actually. Yeah. Uh-oh. Yeah. Well, it is not even this instant. It's not, you know, the whole Bethesda thing. It's. How many other programs do I have to download on my computer to play these fucking games? Like, <laughs> no, and I'm not kidding. There's so many launchers out there that a good portion of my hard drive is probably just launchers <laughs> at this point. And it, it's kind of it's kind of getting to an extreme. It seems like every publisher wants to have their own launcher, their own store. I mean, even yesterday we talked about how Discord's creating a store. Yeah, I, I get you want your own store, but fucking why? Why? <laughs> how many more times do we need this? Yeah, and, and and this may be where Discord can come in and kind of make a find a niche here by having their own platform that works with all of these launchers, where you don't have to worry about. Like, wait, what am I playing? I'm playing uh, Fallout. I need to uh, boot up this launcher first, or I need to, you know, if if yeah. it's all within that Discord platform, great. You know, but you still need fun. all that shit installed, right? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're right about that. Yep. Yep. That's, that's like I said, probably one of the biggest complaints gamers are going to have. If you already don't have the Bethesda launcher, you have to have it to play this on PC. So, right. I mean, and with, with, that, with that comes like creating an account and the pain in the ass with that, you know, confirmation emails, confirming your email and all that shit is just a pain just, in the and ass. And it's just another account that you're going to have to have 2FA on so someone doesn't steal it. So there's right. going to be another 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 you know two FA app on your phone, or you have to get a text every time you log into it. So I mean, oh, it's just something else staying on top of it. I mean, we need yeah. someone out there to create a launcher that will launch any fucking game that's out there, no matter what it is. You can only install it, and then you can just yeah. download the the executable for the game, install the game, and then launch it through a through a, a single launcher. Well, and that's what Steam has been doing. Yeah, you know, pre- pretty well, but yeah. yeah, it's it's all the companies now that kind of want their own thing, like Fatty said. How long before Humble has their own fucking launcher? Oh God, I shouldn't have said anything. I don't think so. No, because they <laughs> they they give you a code that you activate on Steam. I mean, nothing. Right? Is, no, uh, no, I get that, but I'm just yeah. saying. Like I said, every time everybody that sells something wants their own launcher now. Yeah. So I mean, Indie, Indie Gala, they uh they have released that game. The game Die Young is by Indie Gala. How long before they have their own fucking launcher? If they're yeah. if they're if they're helping produce and publish indie games over above that's just true. selling them, I mean shit, that's next. Like it's ridiculous. I mean it's it's there's gotta be an end to it eventually. But like I said, that Discord all in one launcher would be cool. I mean at least it'd be a little or a little more organized, but then you still have to install everything. At least they're not that big. I guess. It's just clunky, yeah. you know, with so just, many different things. Yeah. I mean, and I don't I don't really have many services you know anymore um but there are some games that'll bring up their own launcher and like uh i can't access you know any of the origin games until origin boots up yep. so even though they're you know not dependent on origin for really anything it still has to force it to boot up and sign in and all that so yeah it's just clunky at this point with so many things having that i don't know and the next part of uh the Fallout 76 beta is news. Is it the full game and progression carries over from the beta? Now that is fucking big news. <laughs> like that is unheard of. I mean, I've played plenty of betas, plenty to different ones on PC, on PS4, and never seen progression carry over from a beta into a full game that I can remember. I played like alphas, betas, etc., and been like, oh, yeah. okay. You know, once the game comes out, you got to start all over again. But that's not the case with uh, with Fallout 76, which I think is, I, I don't know if I like it. it. I mean, anyone that gets access to the beta has an advantage, right? It's 
Well, I mean, not necessarily. Mm. Because, like, I mean, we even covered the, the PvP aspect of it and that, you know, you don't have to fight anybody. So the advantage would be, you know, if you have better gear that you'd be able to fight and overpower other players. But if they don't want to fight you, it kind of negates that. And, you know, the whole thing that we talked about yesterday. Well, even still, so well, if you want to fight somebody, though, if you don't know what level their shit is before the fight breaks out, you could be picking that someone could walk up to you being higher level. I don't know how the levels are going to be shown to anybody, but if you're like, ah, I'll fight this guy. I'll send oh, this guy is level 12. I'm level three because I got the game yesterday and boom, boom, I'm dead. He takes all my shit and walks away. Well, if, if I remember correctly, um, they, you don't lose any of your stuff when you die. If you're, if you're, Didn't we mentioned that if you're attacked outside of a, of an agreed fight, oh. I no, no, know. no. No matter what, if you die even in a fight. Oh, okay. So, all right. I guess. There, it, okay. So then what's the it, point it, of PvP then? Well, just to fucking kill each other. Okay. All right. And, and you get bonus. Like, the, you'll get loot and experience and stuff like that. Oh, okay. But um, in other words, like, if you decide to get in a fight with somebody, if you lose, they can't go over and take your gun. Okay. Right. I did, like I said, I didn't understand. I thought it was, in other words, if you were just attacked out of nowhere, didn't agree to the fight, dude smokes you, he just can't steal your shit and run away. No, no, no. Um, They did kind of address what you're talking about, though, the whole level thing. Um, And I don't know how I feel about this. They actually said that in the battle, uh, it's almost like a handicap system that's going to be in there. Todd Howard said a low-level player can defeat a high-level player in power armor, but it's going to be very hard. But it's possible. So it sounds like there's going to be some sort of like handicap system where, you know, if a level one comes in, it's like, I want to fight and this guy's level 30. He can't just completely manhandle, him, you okay. know. So they're um, they're trying to make the PvP as, as even as possible, even if the rank sometimes is the level is, is a little uneven. Essentially. Yeah, okay. All right. Like I said, the PvP aspect of it doesn't interest me, but the multiplayer side of it does. It's going on with your friends and exploring and that shit. That's fun. I mean, I that like I mean, I play it for that reason alone. I mean, the PvP part of it is is nothing I'd really be interested in. But like I said, this the basic fact that the the full game progression or the carry the beta progression carries over. So it says the answer being in our current plan for the beta is it will be a full game and all your progress is safe for launch. We hope you join us. So that means that you'll be downloading an entire game for a beta. That's another thing that's a little wrong. I mean, normally wow. it's just, you know, like a four or five gig file. So this is a 30 or 50 gig file. Like if someone has bandwidth that they have to pay for, <laughs> I hope they got it slotted for that month. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, I they, will, they won't have to reinstall. No, that. I mean, I understand that part of it, but True. it's like, damn, like, I mean, you, for a beta is like going to be 50 or 60 gigs. I wonder if that's mm. part of the reason why they're leaving it on there. On their servers that's, and not sticking. It's kind of cool Steam. getting the getting the full game though as yeah. a beta. Essentially, what it is, it's kind of like almost like a trial, right? Like what EA is doing with the EA Access stuff, where you get the ten yeah. hours, your progress carries over. Um, obviously, they're going to use it productively to to iron out some kinks on there. I wonder. End. I wonder what their um, their policy is on canceling pre orders through the Bethesda system. Because I mean, so how do you get this beta? Is it by pre order only? The game. Yeah. Okay. So. It's Pretty much all the betas are like that now. Yeah, so again, this goes back, though, that, you know, anybody that's going to probably get this beta because they pre-order it, they're going to get the game, you know, so yeah. they've already got everything installed. For me, this seems more convenient. It does right. to me as well. It just, it, like I said, I guess whenever you, when you explain out the PvP aspect of it, that someone can't play the beta for, for two weeks and level up and then roll into the game day one and start picking on people till you find someone who wants to fight just to kick their ass because he's 12 levels above them. So that 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 there kind of takes away that, but like I said, it's just kind of unheard of to have a full game be given as the beta, and then your progression carries over. Because normally the betas are older builds, and half the time shit breaks whenever you, you know, when the full yeah, release comes. So it's normally just a stress test on their servers. Yeah, I mean they they call their break everything test algorithm or what do they call it? They have a name for know. it, an acronym. It's in the other article. <laughs> when know. is this uh, beta launching? Do we know? Um, let me see. It says on there. I hope they don't have an autoplay goddamn ad on their thing. <laughs> Just open up the webpage. Who knows? Um, pre order. Pre order. Pre order. Yeah, I see the pre order. See all the editions <laughs> available. Yeah, here you go, the beta. 
And, da, 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 da. and it's not given a fucking date. Like, really? Alrighty. Okay, we're, all we're right. Done. Well, let's, let's done. go ahead and move on then. Yeah, we spent all together way too much time on that. Yeah. This, this um, is good pod. No, this is bad pod. Yeah. Bad pod. <laughs> 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 all right, moving on. Fatty, talk to us about GTA Online and uh, <laughs> I guess a, a new vehicle. Yeah, so uh, Rockstar is releasing a new vehicle. Actually, tomorrow, they just announced that it's actually happening. Uh, Before this, it was just speculated that it was coming. Uh, Data Miners basically uncovered the new vehicle called the Oppressor MK2. It's a flying jet bike uh, that'll be armed with missiles, explosive round-loaded machine guns, and counter-defense system. It's it's fucking insane. Jesus. Yeah, (laughs) it's it's straight out of the fucking future. Rockstar announced today that it's real. It's coming tomorrow. And players are worried that this vehicle is going to be so OP that it's going to absolutely fuck free mode. As if free mode isn't already messed yeah, up. Yeah, we, we right. mentioned That's that. That's why one. I don't play it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But so players right now, they're worried that basically free mode is going to be loaded with 12 year olds whipping around on these jet bikes, just screwing everyone over, you know, destroying people trying to do challenges. Uh, in free mode jobs, stuff like that. So it, they're they're scared it's just going to be a complete mess. Um, they're also worried that with the announcement of this, this is sort of Rockstar showing that they're not really listening to their players because ever since these updates started coming out with these futuristic vehicles that can fly and fuck you up within two seconds, the players have said, you know, this stuff is getting too OP for free mode. You know, we need to start limiting this because... You can't actually do anything. You know, you sign into free mode and within five seconds, you're getting mowed down. It, it's it's absolutely nuts. So they're a little worried that with the release of this, which is coming tomorrow, Tuesday, it, it's it's going to make it almost unplayable. Personally, free mode's already unplayable. Yeah. In my yeah, eyes. yeah. It's, it's a fucking mess. Like, I still go on there just to see how long I can survive, but... You know, with this being added, it's not going to make much of a difference. It's already a shit show. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it, it's, I wouldn't even say that there's a chance of this happening. I would say it's guaranteed that this is absolutely going to break it. If you mm-hmm. spot this vehicle in free mode, you're fucked. That's it. Well, you oh, find exactly. a new session. Even if you get to see it, <laughs> you could be yeah. lock on the ass, you'd be dead. Just like, oh, there goes my car. Oh, exactly. I mean, it was a little crazy when they added the jets with like a lock on missiles and explosive guns. But now there's like flying DeLoreans and this bike and just all types of futuristic shit that, you know, kind of doesn't really fit into the aesthetic of GTA. But it's also just making it impossible to play. So this is going to make a fucking difference. It's it's all shit. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. They need to. Yeah. Like I said, it's. It's tough to play in it now, so like I mean, adding this shit's just definitely gonna make it worse. There's no no two ways about it. Well, so are we anticipating uh, maybe them recanting the addition of this vehicle at some oh, point I, in the near I, future? I, well, oh God, no, no, don't no. They, they'll make they'll, <laughs> if, if they'll you make look a at this boatload of money off this fucking thing. Exactly, exactly. If you look at this bike, it's so fucking cool looking. There's <laughs> definitely ten year olds stealing their mom's credit cards all ready to buy them GTA oh, there's, bucks. There's, there's <laughs> YouTubers like, gone already gone to their Google AdSense accounts to cash out money for this fucking thing. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, so this will be another success for Rockstar and another failure for their players. Yep. Yeah. Damn. At least we don't gotta worry about flying jet bikes and rdr2 when it comes well out. don't say it now because it'll <laughs> it'll be fucking a flying pegasus hey I, 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 yeah. exactly i'm still waiting for my flying pony with its spoiler on the back end so there you know, go it's huh? gonna happen oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, it'll go great with the battle royale mode yeah <laughs> they already have that it's called realm royale <laughs> <laughs> or pony royale oh. how much do you get paid to say that <laughs> it's a shameless plug yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right well i guess we'll uh we'll wait and see if we hear anything further on that but uh moving on speaking of shameless uber talk to us about this game uh yes <laughs> so i've become the default uh ea news uh spokesperson it seems like any ea news mm. I'm, I'm the one EA fortnite, fortnite. this is perfect because this this Nintendo. blends both of my favorite uh things together here uh according to ea's ceo andrew wilson we all know him um 
he's actually saying that Fortnite is good for EA, that it's yeah. actually going to end up helping EA in the oh, long run. Yeah. Now, his theory on this, uh, we'll link the article below, but he said this during an earnings call, which it makes sense, right? What is he going to say when people see numbers for EA's games drop off dramatically, due, probably due in part because of Fortnite? Uh, but he his, he's banking on Fortnite bringing more gamers or more people into gaming as a whole, and that in turn helping EA's uh, sales for the holiday season. Uh, I'm not so sure about that. If that's if that's true, I mean, if that's really if that's really going to make a big difference uh, on the bottom line for EA, I, I definitely do think that Fortnite has has uh, has caused big companies like EA um, some customers for sure. I mean, I'm one of them. That's I, I've sp I spent so much time on Fortnite that I I just didn't have enough time to spend on any other games. Really, there's only so many hours in the day. So there's two ways to look at it. Uh, in a, in a way, yes, there may be new players getting onboarded, and especially it's a it's a free free to play game, uh, and maybe there are people who are buying consoles just to play Fortnite. I don't know. It seems seems a little much but maybe maybe there are people like that and eventually fortnite's probably not going to be what it is now and and people are probably going to look to to play other things so uh, i could see that but I, i'm just not sure if that's really going to help ea's bottom line uh during the holiday season this year uh, no maybe. and and right. i don't i don't see how that could be true within this context because ea that doesn't own fortnite right right yeah, them saying that their competitor having extreme success is good for their sales doesn't make sense. Right, right. <laughs> no, exactly. You know? If how... anything, it's taking away from their yeah, sales. Yeah, so what I, what I think the underlying sentiment here probably is, is that he's saying, right here, we have a new business model, ladies and gentlemen. This is what we'll be doing, and that's why it's good for us. <laughs> well, that's I that... think that they're probably going to develop something and close and, very close to the Fortnite business model and they've Madden already they've already said as much right they've already said that they're looking into a free-to-play standalone battle royale mode that's uh yep. separate from the battlefront or battle royale mode or that the battlefield battlefield battlefront i always get those confused battlefront mm -hmm. is star wars right right yes battlefield well the battlefield battle royale whatever their game is going to be called is included with battlefield 5 so right but they said as much separate they're going to all together right they're going to work on a free-to-play standalone battle royale title which i you know what i the more i think about it the more i play these games i i really think this is just a fab like this is this is we just they fortnite struck struck lightning in a bottle and they blew this genre up, but I just don't know if it's sustainable. I don't know if five years from now people are really going to be that hot about battle royale games. I think it's all going to kind of come back to earth and settle down, and we're going to be looking for traditional type games again. I don't know. I could be wrong. I, could well, be I don't know. Wrong. I mean, I I could say pretty confidently, you know, years down the road that I'll, I'll still get the similar thrill from playing a battle royale game because I do enjoy the genre. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of PUBG's with as many problems as it has, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah. But um, you know, I I do find it thrilling to have to you know race against the clock and other players for you know like the 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 bare bones like DNA of this game structure is still satisfying, you know, to me. Um, now I don't I don't think it's a time thing because you know I, I don't regularly play PUBG anymore. But when I was putting a lot of time into it, you know I still got that feeling every match. And then you know every time I go back to it, I still enjoy it. You know it, it's just as anxiety inducing to me and just as pleasing when I you know outgun somebody because I've got the better loot or whatever. And, you know, recently Panther and I have uh, been participating in the beta for Fear the Wolves, which is another battle Royale game. I still enjoy this stuff. I don't, I don't think it's a, um, I don't think it's like a, you know, uglier stepbrother to a shooter genre per se. You know, I just, I think it's just another one. You know, yeah. it's, it, I think it's not going to be as hugely and widely successful and popular in many years i agree with that right now this is the thing this is the phenomenon 
and uh, PUBG, you know, hit it first, and then Fortnite really blew it out of the water. And I don't think we're going to see another huge success story in this, um, in this genre. But yeah, I, th I think that years from now, people will still be playing these games, and we'll probably see some releases here and there, you know, from other people. But I don't think that we're going to ever see anything as successful as Fortnite in the genre again. Likely yeah. not. But to go to kind of agree a bit with Baker on the the what they mean by you know this is good for them is the basic fact they see that a company can make a fucking billion dollars off microtransactions by selling cosmetic items so that's what they're banking on so good yeah. for gaming means in other words they can start developing games and sell them for sixty dollars a pop and then turn around and add purple pants and purple unicorns at the ass and everyone's just going to keep buying them right. because everyone is so used to doing that because that's what everybody did with Fortnite. So but you know what? They've been doing that. The $60 thing, they've been right. doing that. I think they're looking at it well, as, even, okay, hey, even, you know what? Even we still, can give these games away and make a billion even dollars. If the, even if they give them away, they're still, that's going to be their business model is here's a, here's a game and here is um, all this shit that you should buy, and that's going to be shoved down everyone's throat, and that's going to turn into the next thing. I mean, I like I said, cosmetics to support gameplay, I, I agree with. I don't buy them, so it, anyone that wants to buy them is just feeding, it's just getting me free content. But yeah. the fact that they're basing their game and their monetization solely how they're going to make any money is by people just constantly handing them money to buy cosmetic items in a video game. I don't know if that's good overall business. Like, it's good and bad in a way. Like I said, it's great because we get content. We don't have to dish out 60 bucks again for a season pass. But I'd rather pay $60 for a game and have cosmetic items to kind of help, you know, subsidize some DLC instead of them giving me the game for free and then just constantly every day just get bombarded with, like, you need to buy this, you need to buy this hat and this pants and this this thing and that thing and like that's all it's going to turn into be so is they going to even develop the game anymore or are they just going to develop cosmetic items yeah so that's that's kind of my worry is if that's the business model is cosmetic items then you know they're they're not going to develop a proper game they're just going to give you oh let's give them this three-quarter finished game and a whole bunch of cosmetics to buy and then we can start kind of adding on to the game every couple every two or three months while they're spending all their hard-earned money on new hats and new pants for their character so like i said that's my worry is that they're going to give us shit games full of cosmetics or uncompleted and games and full of cosmetics that's what i'm gonna guess is gonna be their direction <laughs> that's exactly yeah. it i think because yeah, yeah, i mean yeah, they're getting they're slammed games, for their right? so, yeah they're yeah. getting slammed for their business model right now we talked about legislation already moving into place so i think ea's current business model of charge them at the door and then charge them for every step that they take if they want to continue playing, and especially if they want to be successful in this game, charge them even more. Um, you know, there there are pieces you know that you have to pay for for everything, and, and you know, pay for good players, pay to compete, pay to win. That whole business model right now is being shit on and scrubbed into the floor. You know, they're they're going to get trampled here soon, and. I think that them saying that Fortnite is good for gaming is more, you know, code for saying this new business model that's blown up and, you know, become a billion dollar industry in the past year is where we're going. This yeah. is good for us because this is our out to still make a ton of money and not have to put too much actual shit into our games. Yeah. I think a big thing here is the onboarding of people, uh, getting people who may not be, like like take madden for example uh people that buy madden are interested in in madden i mean they're, they're people that are gonna buy madden now you're you're asking them to buy buy these ultimate team items these packs and things like that but if you give a game away you may very well get a large audience of people who may who may have never thought about buying this game and then they start playing it they may get hooked on the cosmetics they may like the gameplay they they might they might they might end up dropping a few dollars and you know if, if that's all it takes a couple of dollars per person that they onboard people who may have not bought this game for 60 dollars, but now are getting it for free i mean that's how fortnite has made so much money it's become just such a phenomenon and it's it's become so mainstream that even people who weren't gamers before have picked it up and maybe bought a season pass here and there and that's all it takes ten dollar season pass man you multiply that by a few million people that's a lot of money 
I think yep. that's what they're that's what they're looking at. Like Baker was saying, that that business model of, hey, you know what? We don't need to charge people at the door anymore. We can give these games away and still make an absolute killing just by by the quantities of people rolling in who may have never picked up our game before, but now because it's free, they may just download it. They may give it a shot. And, you know, even if they just spend a dollar, hey, that's more than they would have gotten. Yeah. Pretty much. It's scary. Scary time. <laughs> I know it's it's a new so, so it's a probably new era. probably this time next year you know there'll be some free to play game that's announced that we can already you know tell they're they're waving that flag right there that this is going to be their Fortnite uh, yeah and you know what the business model's already been in place if you look at all their mobile games right EA's yeah. mobile game mobile games The Sims and all the, those games they have on mobile yep. who are free to play quote unquote free to play. If you want to do anything substantial in any of those games, you are going to have to dish out some money. Yep. So that's a, the new world we live in, I think. <laughs> for now, yeah. For now, is. for now. But there's still, you know, your titles in between that that don't follow that model. So, so we're still lucky to have games like God of War and Red Dead coming out and horizon zero dawn there's still those yeah. titles well I, just as a quick mention here because you just hit, hit red dead um you know are, are any of you guys uh, others other than me slightly worried now with this whole gta online fiasco we just talked about no no like no. uh like free mode just becoming completely well i mean yeah i mean it's gonna be full of fucking trolls anyways i mean fuck come on it's online but yeah, yeah but they... I but I remember I remember when we played uh, Red Dead Online Panther, you know, me, you, and some of the others, is that you know we had a posse, and one person couldn't overpower all of us. No, no. And it was rare to find you know a group that could compete. So you know, and, and then the the free roam engagements weren't really that dangerous to us. And then the individual game modes were obviously not rigged, you know, in any way really. Mm. Um. So I, I wasn't worried until, you know, we just talked about GTA Online with this new vehicle and kind of thinking about it. You know what? It really is a fucking shit show. Yeah, but yeah, as much money as they but, make. But think of it this way. The, the issue with GTA is it's in the current. It's in the present. So there's room to add these, you know, futuristic overpowered vehicles that just fuck everything up. The beautiful thing about Red Dead is it's based in a time where none of this shit existed. You know, this wasn't even thought of. So if they were to come out with uh, an update that adds a flying motorcycle or a flying pony that's made of the robotics and has missiles <laughs> and shit, I, I think the Red Dead community is going to go up in a fucking uproar. Oh, big time. That's true. Like, I mean, I not, hope so. I mean, they're not going to give you a, like a, a horse and carriage that has like missile launchers on the side of it and shit. You know, the, they could the go steampunk with it. The covered, cool. the covered wagon yeah, is not going to have, you know, cool. you know. There, RPGs right. and surface to air missiles, you know, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> the fact that, you know, there's going to be probably some, I'm, I'm not saying these items are no, going to directly that, translate to that, to that extent, but cars yeah, and RPGs, I mean, but... as long as they give us the option where you can do like a friends only online where you can go and just do whatever the fuck you want, I'm, I'm all in and I'm happy about it. But if they force you to play with randoms all the time, I'll be a little pissed because yeah. you just yeah. randoms, randoms, like what they are, are fucking randoms. <laughs> but again like i'm i'm really solely looking to buy this game as a single player alone and then anything multiplayer is a bonus oh for same me. for me i you know yeah. i'm totally willing to spend my 60 dollars on this game to have an awesome offline uh story mode experience and then if just kind of like uncharted i treat it a little bit like uncharted right like they have a multiplayer and stuff and i've dabbled it. with it but yeah but really you know i spent i i give them my money here take my 60 dollars just for this awesome awesome story mode and if i get a bunch of hours of play out of it and if i play play it through even just once because you guys know me <laughs> i've got my money worth you know yeah. so online to me is secondary but now with more and more details coming out and their comments of, of it becoming, you know, them talking about it being a game changer and like an industry game changer, uh, I'm definitely, my interest is, is definitely peaked. But I'm still primarily looking at Red Dead just to have a offline campaign blast. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, single player is a focus for sure. All right, let's move on here. Uh, Panther's prodding us along. <laughs> someone has to bad pod bad pod okay um so 
PUBG, uh, like I said, we were going to talk about that in a little bit, and now is the time. So for the longest time, and, and I can especially speak to this as a longtime PUBG player, it's been kind of broken, you know, in kind of a lot of ways. Not unplayable. Um, you know, they've been cracking down on cheaters for months now, and I, I think it's a, it's a lot healthier as far as that aspect of it. But just, you know, basic net code and, and basic quality of life and bug fixes, you know, stuff that should have been taken care of forever ago has just kind of dropped by the wayside while they've been adding, you know, the couple new maps that they've got. And, you know, I'm, I'm really not a fan of this um, event pass thing that they did with the newest map. I think that's really shit. But beyond that, there's a lot of stuff that needed to be fixed with this game that they just haven't really put the time and effort into so PUBG is actually trying to get out in front of this now and they acknowledge that the battle royale game could improve across the board so they've announced uh what they call a fix PUBG campaign and this comes with its own actual dedicated website which contains a roadmap a fix log of what they've already done an FAQ uh and the developer Bluehole says it will be entirely focused on bug fixes fundamental performance issues and long needed quality of life improvements. They don't say how long this fixed PUBG campaign is going to last, but they do promise transparency for the duration. So the roadmap is a nice touch. I do like that, that we've got some type of idea on what they're working on and when they're working on, when they expect it to be completed, um, that they're going to show a log of what they have done. I mean, this, this to me is a, a very good and responsible step that needed to be taken. So for a long time, like I said, people have been complaining about this and I don't feel like it was ever really properly addressed. Not even so much as really like, a, you know, we understand and we're working on it. I, I just feel like they were kind of ho-hum about, you know, when they were going to address this thing. So that they've kind of full stop said, you know, right here, the time is now. We're going to fix this. I, I like that. It's about goddamn time, but I like that. I agree. Um, that's is it too late though? I don't think so. I think they're, I don't think so. I think either. their numbers dropped off, but the fact they've been doing a lot of these updates and, and they haven't been charging any type of DLC, which they know they could fucking strung up for if they tried. I um, mean, you know that season pass thing or whatever they were trying, or event pass thing, kind of. They took yeah. a bad press on that, but them finally realizing they need to crack down and get this game functioning at a level where it should be by now for the amount of money they've made off this. That's a good. It, it may get some of the PUBG players back. It'll get me back. I mean, I enjoyed the time. I the few. The, well, I should say a few times, but the quite a few times that we played it. But yeah, the the issues where you know shit was glitching and you couldn't pick up weapons and couldn't fire stuff and those things. It just kind of got frustrating. Is one reason I stopped playing it. And so I mean, if they get shit sorted out where the game runs a hell of a lot better, I'm definitely gonna get back into playing it. Cause like Baker said, that the the anxiety and the thrill of you know trying to find a weapon to to kill somebody before they kill you is is intense, and I enjoy it. But yeah, I mean, just the quality of the game itself was kind of one of the drawbacks. So um, yeah, I can see myself playing it again if they get some shit fixed. Yeah, and even, you know, with as much as I've been enjoying Fear of the Wolves. Now, Panther, I know you don't enjoy it as much. but Well, there's still so um, many problems with, with the beta in my mind, but yeah. There is, but but even so, as much as I enjoy that game, I'll probably end up getting it to play it. But for me, it is a different experience, and that's not going to negate the enjoyment that I get out of playing PUBG. And especially with some much-needed improvements, PUBG is still, for me the king of the battle royale genre um you know because for for me fortnite is is almost too too cartoonish to to really be you know in the same class regardless of it being the same genre it's still it's it's so so different yeah. and i you know whatever that difference is specifically i'm not sure but i don't enjoy the fortnite end of the battle royale spectrum for me, I'm I'm into much more of the grounded games like PUBG is, you know, more realistic in how it actually plays moment to moment. Um, Fear of the Wolves is the same thing. You know, it's got a little bit kind of a sci fi feel, I guess, to it. But, um, you know, the battle royale genre, like I said earlier, I don't think it's going anywhere. And with PUBG finally launching this campaign to fix itself. I think it's going to it's going to start climbing back in the eyes of gamers because one thing they also noted in this article is that at the time of the article the um 
the recent reviews for PUBG, which was over 21,000, uh, it was sitting at mostly negative. And that's that's a ton of negative people. And and most people that, uh, as this article points out, what I could tell you anyways, most people that would recommend this game still would say that it, it needs to be fixed and improved, you know, pretty greatly. So I think even diehard fans of PUBG, you know, that play this all the time and have a significant amount more playtime than I do, they'd probably still echo this same conversation, you know, that a lot of this should have been fixed, but I'm happy it's coming and, you know, can't wait to see what it feels like in six months or a year from now. No other comments. Okay. <laughs> so, so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll go over ahead right on uh, Panther back to you and talk to us about uh, some IGN controversy. So IGN's one of their, um, I guess you call them a writer. I guess that's what they call themselves. One of their reviewers, <laughs> writers, their employees got fucking busted for stealing someone else's review for the game Dead Cells. So IGN has come out with a statement and they said, we received these, the allegations against one of our writers regarding our review of dead cells. After taking the time to investigate, we determined that there were substantial similarities between the review posted weeks earlier and our review that could not be justified and warranted taking down though. We are our community as a community often share feelings and often certain word choices to describe the game we love by using similar frames of understanding. The particular situation stepped over the line and is not a reflection of our editorial standards. We apologize to our readers, developer uh, Motion Twin, and especially the YouTuber known as Boomstick Gaming, that's who got ripped off, uh, for failing to uphold these standards. We have taken our review process seriously in most cases. Reviewers are expected to play a game. Uh, single player plays... Uh, there we go, messing shit up. <laughs> Expected to play a game single player or story campaign to completion at least once, as well as spend additional time capturing gameplay to supply content on the video component of the reviews. Though our Dead Sales reviewer played the game and came uh, along with glowing opinions of it, as did many of our other staff members, the review itself was simply not acceptable, and we've parted ways with the writer involved in the review. And they apologize, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So... The guy was called out um, by Boomstick Gaming. There was a post on Reddit. He played his video. He played uh, Phillips' video. Phillips is the is the individual that was fired. He um, basically he used different words in a few different spots, but it was almost a pretty big copy of what Fallout Boomstick Gaming said. And I can understand some words getting this, you know, being to describe a game being used. Like, oh, this game was really cool. I like this part of said game, A, B, C. And the guy says the same similar thing because they're talking about the same function of the game. But the descriptive words describing actions and, and stuff were identical. And that's fucking sad that this guy played the game, apparently loved the game, but then couldn't write his own article so he sold someone else's. So It's terrible. <laughs> it, I mean, I like I said, I, I, the worst thing is, I mean, if he had to come out and said, you know, I've watched this other review and I feel that some of my opinions may be the same. If he had to come out front, out front and said that, that would make an understandable. So, well, you watch this one guy's review to see someone else's opinion outside of the company, then yeah, maybe you would watch his review and you, your opinions may match up a little closer than if you hadn't watched it. But he just basically kind of played it off that it was all him. He never even tried to even you know, making a, an, not even an excuse, but to try to get, let people know that he watched other people's review before he done his own, nothing. So then this Philip D douchebag, he makes things worse with a non-apology video. Now I'm going to link the, the IGN um, there because it was the statement, their statement, their, their response. I'm going to link that. Plus I'm linking two YouTube videos. If I don't know if Phillips is even up anymore, he probably pulled it by now. But he put up a non-apology video, like kind of trying to explain away what he did without really apologizing. And uh -huh. then he goes off and says that this one writer at Kotaku was saying that, oh, he's even trying to say that I stole someone's uh, FIFA 18 review, one of the Nintendo um, review companies. So anyways, he said, go ahead and try to find it. Like, he basically was taunting another writer, calling another writer out of a head, one of the big 
gaming review companies at Kotaku. So then, like, not even, like, two hours later on Reddit, here appears a video proving that he fucking stole the review from, for the FIFA 18. <laughs> so oh this God. dude, I, like I said, I don't know if his video, I'm not going to try to play it right now for the fact that if I play it, it's going to get picked up on the podcast. But um, I know the, the, like I said, the link for the IGN, and I said also the link for the video where he gets called out in the, F8, or in the FIFA 18 um review as well so this guy just he just buried himself and like that non-apology video he was getting roasted in his youtube comments um a few people defended him a lot of people were roasting him even someone that said he's a, a, a i'm a friend of yours man you need to take this down because this is not doing you any favors yeah. so like i mean this guy just train wrecked the big time like it was it was it was kind of sad to watch but it's great that he got fucking busted so yeah goes, goes to show you don't this, don't steal this, shit this guy gives journalists such a bad name like what the fuck man fuck this guy yeah totally <laughs> you know i i used to write reviews for sports gamers online and the one thing i always i always did is i made sure to not watch watch or read anybody else's review and that makes sense he, he, you know even subconsciously it may skew your your opinion or it may right. you know I mean, you're not going to use the same exact words, but it, it can, you know, subconsciously do something. So I have a big problem with that. The fact that he, first of all, did, didn't, just didn't have the, I, I don't know what the word is, but he couldn't just play the game and review it. Like he didn't have the confidence in his own opinion to review the game, but rather rip somebody else's review off, which he watched before writing this like i have a big problem with that and i have a huge problem with him not owning up to it that video that he made was terrible he he came mm -hmm. across like such a sleaze ball even worse than you know just own up to it he already had gotten fired at that point just own up to it look the proof is in the pudding it's not like you can really dispute this i mean in, in some cases the words are identical i mean and too many uh, and too many of the words and that's the thing like i said a few of them right. are gonna. A few of them would be the same no matter what review you watch, right? Sure, you're There's talking about be... the same game, and you may have even similar opinions about right. the game. But, but uh, yeah, I mean, like if you're talking about jumping across this gap was was difficult because of something else, then you're gonna describe something of an action similar, but your actual like you know where your off the cup description of events happening in the game are almost a mirror of somebody else's. That's a little sketchy when it happens right. like 15 times in a eight minute video. <laughs> like, right. yeah, I mean, it, it was, he was so fucking busted. And like I said, when he tried to make it better, it was making it worse. And then the, I love the second video that was posted showing that he did steal the, uh, the FIFA 18 review. It was just <laughs> gold. I'm like, this dude is a fucking train wreck. I've got to, I really, I really want to talk about IGN side of this because I got to kind of side with them. They got a lot of hate they for do. this, you know. A lot of people just really questioned their uh, journalistic integrity when it comes to video game journalism. And it's not fair. Uh, myself, I'm a journalist by trade. You guys know that. Uh, I've worked within newspapers, written for magazines, and I'm freelancing now. So companies hire me to write articles about different things for them. And in this industry, that those companies put a lot of faith in the writer themselves when they get these articles these videos and stuff when they go to the editing team they're not they're not spending a lot of time looking to see if they're plagiarized because that faith is laid on the writer what they're doing is they're going through making sure it's all grammarly correct so that's not correct right there what i just said and <laughs> and they're, they're making sure that the, the article is sound you know something that they feel is worth posting they, they put that emphasis on the writer because they have faith that they're not going to be a fucking asshole and steal someone else's shit. So it, it's, they don't, they don't have the time nor the manpower in any newsroom, even, even though IGN only focuses really on games, it's still a newsroom. They don't have that manpower to really figure out like, Oh, is this plagiarized? Cause that's not what they're looking for. You know, these writers are on oh, the yeah. hook for that. Right. They're supposed to be, you know, higher than that, I guess. Yeah, it's impossible for them to go through all this. One positive thing to come out of this is Boomstick Gaming. <laughs> yeah. You know what? That's yeah. I watched his review um, back, not just the side by side, but his actual review. Phenomenal review, and probably didn't get enough credit for this review prior to this news breaking. 
Um, I'm sure he's gained some subscribers and some some new fans through all all this, as he should. Um, people people so, were saying that I Jen needs to hire him. Yeah, <laughs> they were, they, they, yeah they, fuck yeah. They were that even there was the even cards. there was even a comment on another article related to this topic where they're talking compensation for Boomstick Gaming as well. So right. I, mean, I mean, like I, IGN is IGN is doing all in their power to make things as right as they can, and and that's and that's great. I mean, they definitely you know they got fucked over by this Philip guy, and it's it sucks at them because they've always kind of been, you know, people always kind of slam IGN a lot, and yeah. you know they pick on them and say this and that, and the reviews are paid for and all this shit. People just like to shit on them, I guess. But I mean, yeah, I mean they're doing all in their power to make this right as the best they can. And I mean, Byron Phillip was the right move and basically yeah. dissing themselves right off the bat and then trying to make amends with Boomstick. So, yeah, I yeah. mean, it, it worked out hopefully for everybody in the end except for Phillip because fuck that guy. Yeah, fuck, fuck <laughs> Phillip. <laughs> fuck like, IGN, yeah. like, like Fatty said, it's, it's, it's oftentimes uh, they trust their employees to an extent they have to, right? The only time I was ever really mad at IGN was when I was and I don't even remember what the review was, but it was for a game that I was really looking forward to. And I watched the IGN review and it was literally like a 37 second review. It was fucking insane. Like it was an under a minute review. And I thought that's how can you review a game in 37 seconds? I, and I, I sure enough, the comments, you know, people were just going nuts on that. And, and <laughs> they, they haven't done it since. The reviews are usually short and sweet, and they don't go into too much depth. But you want a little bit more substance than thirty-seven seconds of a for a gaming <laughs> yeah. review. That that really pissed me off, and I don't even remember the game, but I was mad at the time. I don't know, and I, I don't really take IGN seriously that much anymore. You know, and I haven't for a long time. But really, just I feel like their game reviews, like I don't know. I wish that they would aggregate like a number of writers you know instead of just one person's opinion as the official Agreed. review you totally know because agree. because people vary wildly in their opinions of certain games and like it's astounding to me that you know all these call of duty games are so hated by the community for the most part and they still get just glowing reviews from ign and i can't fucking wrap my head around it because, because they're shit well because the IGN <laughs> that's probably room. checks being hammered <laughs> It's, well, it's, and and that's the thing though, because we just talked about IGN getting slammed for their reviews and their integrity and everything. And right there, you just made an offhand comment like, "Oh yeah, it's because they're getting paid for." It. I mean, like right. you just did it, <laughs> right? No, yeah. I mean, who knows? But quite I, possibly. The thing is, is they're probably handing the Call of Duty game to the guy that loves Call of Duty, and yeah. that's what. But that's right. that's biased journalism. Exactly. Though. That's not. It's I mean, the same. That's, that's what I'm talking yeah, about. Exa exactly. And I, that's why I said I agree with you. They need to. They need to have like a two or three team people reviewing games to somehow like try to yeah get a JRPG guy to uh, uh, review right. Call of Duty. <laughs> there you <laughs> go. Jesus. Well, I don't. I don't even agree with that either. I would like to see three fans of the shooter genre do it, and then the median score is what they go with. There you go. That's a yeah, fair, that's, that's a, a that's a yep. fair way of doing it. We should you know we because should, we it, be running it's a gaming fair. review site it's, too. It's not fair. It's, it goes in the opposite direction of the, the the Call of Duty fanboy reviewing it by taking somebody that's not a fan and that's going to have a terrible time. Right. You know, like that. That's yeah. no fair either. No, that's true. Uh, but you know what? If you're basing uh, you buying or not buying a game on an IGN review, you're doing it all wrong, anyways. So yeah, I, I, I watched through. You know, I know. I watched I... those for entertainment reasons, and I I like watching them. But I'm, uh, you know. The, the thing is, what I do is, I if I'm, if I'm unsure about a game, I'll watch a bunch of reviews from a bunch of random sure. sources, oh, even yeah. IGN. And then what I do, if the game is out, I'll watch a bunch of gameplay or people streaming it, and then I'll just kind of form my own opinion from what I can see, right? And that's probably a, a good way of doing it. Yeah, only you time I usually, one... The only time I usually go to IGN is because they get some guy the IGN first, we get some first gameplay and... And first looks right. at some games. That's the only reason I even go there. I usually don't even go to IGN. I have right. quite a few other sites where I get my news from. But yeah, IGN is probably one of the last places I go for anything. Yeah, I mean that the good they get they get oftentimes they get the inside scoop or they get interviews with the developers. So they get the good you know they get they get access basically. So that's I watch them for that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's true. But anyways, we'll move on. But uh, before we do, fuck Philip. Fuck Philip. <laughs> Fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right, so uh, Fatty, talk to us about uh, yet another PS4 console version. Yeah, well, if you'll remember a couple weeks ago, we had a discussion on the Spider-Man limited edition the PS4 uh-huh. coming out. And uh, it, the table, it was kind of one-sided, you know? It was three against one, you know? Uh, three of us loved it and one of us hated it. I think this is going to turn the tables. I think it's going to be the exact opposite. <laughs> So, to commemorate 500 million PlayStation consoles being sold since the original PlayStation, Sony is releasing a special edition PS4 Pro console uh, that's kind of bringing some styles from the 90s back, but in a kind of classy way. Um, The new system is coming in a dark, translucent blue, which allows, you know, players to see inside the system, kind of like you you would have been able to with the old N64 consoles, or even the original Xbox had a translucent one. Um, So both the console and the controller will be this sort of see-through, but it's it's not, like, really see-through. It's kind of just see-through enough. Yeah, it's almost like a glow that you can see. Yeah, exactly. And that kind of keeps it a little classier than the cheaper stuff that we would have saw, you know, decades (laughs) before. Um, So... Each of the bundles are going to be coming with a two terabyte pro console, a controller and a PlayStation camera. Um, The controller will actually be able to be purchased separately as well. So if you don't want to buy a new console, you can at least get the limited edition controller by itself. Um, And you'll also be able to purchase a gold headset with the same kind of transparent casing. Um, There's going to be 50,000 of these sold worldwide and each console will have a bronze number plate that will say, you know, number whatever out of 50,000. I'd like to take credit for that. They they (laughs) clearly (laughs) listened to our podcast from a couple weeks ago. Definitely did. Thank you. Thank you, Sony. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Yeah. You came up with the idea. You should be writing a letter to them. Be like, man, I want my fucking severances. Give me that money. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, so it's going to come with a number plate. And also along with the dark translucent blue, there's going to be like bronze, uh, bronze PlayStation emblems on it. It just, it looks really cool to me. Um, So this system is going to go on sale in Canada, US in August 24th, but I imagine they're probably going to go quick. There's only 50,000 sold worldwide. That seems like a pretty huge number, but for the collectors out there, they're they're going to want to grab that. But uh, personally, I know I fucking, I hated the Spider-Man one. You guys loved it. (laughs) I love this one, but I think you guys are going to hate it. Okay. So we had, we had a mild discussion on slack about this i first seen it i'm like eh and then you posted the link and i said i gotta see more pictures so i did see more pictures and i said i didn't like it and you kind of said that i was in love with the the spider-man one when i first seen the spider-man one the big white spider on it it was cool the more that we looked at it the more we talked about it during that episode I realized that, you know, it was my first initial, oh, wow, that looks fucking cool, was like, it's all right, but it could have been better. That was kind of my ending take on it was it could have been better. And my opinion Mm -hmm. on this has changed from I don't fucking like it to it's all right. I think the controller looks more tacky and the blue camera looks more tacky. Yeah, I'll agree with you there. I think the translucency makes things, tends to make things, look a little cheaper i don't know yeah That's... like it's i mean like looking at the blue camera looks odd the the controller i mean when you're playing the control you don't usually stare at it anyways the console itself without like you can kind of see the light up bar across the front because it is translucent it's kind of neat but it still to me looks cheap but mm-hmm. yeah i mean the more i've seen some different pictures i've seen some better quality picture i don't know, I can't say the ones on this article are bad quality but in different lighting i've seen some pictures of it and you know, it, I've, it's like, it's not as bad as I first thought, but still, I think they could have done better. But, yeah, I don't hate it as much as I, when I first seen it, though. Yeah, I, I, I like to I like it myself because, yeah, the translucent stuff is sort of tacky, but it's not as translucent as what you'd see with, like, the old 90s right, tech. Right, I get it. Where they thought that was really cool. I feel like that sort of, like, almost frosted matte look, but being able to kind of see through it kind of keeps it classy. Like, if I put that on my entertainment si- system in my living room, it, it'll be a nice, like, sort of footnote there. You know, people see that and be like, oh, that's kind of cool. You know, it's not flashy for the sake of being flashy. Right. It's subtle. And the it comes with an actual vertical stand, which is new, because no other console sold by playstation has come with a vertical sand this one does 
mm-hmm. it's included. So that's kind of neat too. But yeah, I mean, if you're look if you're looking for a PS4 Pro and you're wanting to buy this, you, if you haven't pre-ordered, you're probably not getting one. And uh, yeah. Shue Yoshida's got number one. <laughs> he posted that on Twitter. He's got number one. So oh shit, yeah. So like I um, said, it's um like I said, it's it's not as I think as nice as maybe they could have went with it. I don't know. I'm not I'm not mm-hmm. a console designer, but yeah, I mean, like I said. My first opinion was, oh, that's gross, but now it's like, ah, eh, it's not that bad. Yeah, I agree with the controller, though. The controller looks tacky as fuck. Like, I'm not going to buy the controller by itself. It's just no. not worth the book, it. The book Spe- camera is like, eh, it looks like the camera looks better in black. Cause, yeah, mean, people are gonna same, hang that same on, here. Yeah, people are going to hang mm-hmm. that on their TV. It's going to be why you get this blue thing on top of your TV. And I think PS3, they had translucent controllers for PS3. Am I wrong on that? Or you guys They did, but they were, they were like the really cheap Ooh. looking transparent. Were they, like, third, yeah. were they third party though? No, like they were Mad actually Cats? Sony. They... No, I think they were Sony branded. Oh, wow. PS3 Ugh. controllers. Yeah, they were red and blue. I, I think they had red, blue. They may have had another color as well, like a smoke, like a smoky gray or something like that. I know I got like a. I got a Pepto Bismo pink PS3 controller. <laughs> it's not see through, but I love it. It's awesome. Oh, that's <laughs> kind of cool. I see. I like that. I also I, I was a fan of the Camo uh, controllers back when those came out. Yeah, I had, I had one, one of those. I, I had one of those. I have, I have, I have a cool. white one. I have the blue one, and uh, I have a silver one. The PS4 is silver. It's still in the box. So, oh yeah. Yeah, I think the uh, silver. My one's favorite. Sweet. My favorite ever controller was the they. I think it was a PS4 controller. I've wrecked it since, but it was a limited edition, like a retro PlayStation controller that was gray, like the PS1, the original PlayStation. And it had, you know, it's just themed like the original PlayStation. And it was a limited edition controller. I, I don't remember if it was a PS4 or a PS3 controller, though. Um, but I love that thing, and I don't know where it is now. But I've kind of come around on, on the Spider-Man PS4, though, Fatty. Uh, oh, yeah? The the thing that you mentioned that that I really thought when, when you see it in a standalone picture just by itself you think wow that's pretty flashy pretty neat but when you said think about it like sitting on your in your inter- entertainment center and if is it gonna fit right like it, it's gonna look kind of strange and it looks it looks great for a kid's room but if you're an adult like all yeah. of us are and you have it in your living room right and, you know, one of your non-gamer friends come over it's gonna be like well, what the fuck is that <laughs> right so this one that we're talking about now the the anniversary or the 50 million units sold special edition is probably gonna hold up a little bit it'll, nicer it'll blend it'll unit. blend in in some cases bad for sure better than yeah, yeah, the red and, one. And, yeah, and the numbered plaque—that's a nice touch. The bronze uh, features—that—that's that, pretty cool. I want to see more of that. I really do. What's your, opinion, what's your opinion, Baker? Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm I'm a little unimpressed by it. You know, I I I like the translucency in the console itself, but agreed, I don't like the controller. I don't give a shit about the camera because you know I'm not going to use one. Um. <laughs> But I, I still prefer just the classic black, man. I mean, I for me, that can't be beat. Whatever edition they come out with and colors and what, whatever they decide to do with it, I'm a huge fan of just the standard black, dude. I That's think, it. I think, I think the white one looks good. That's what I have eh. on PS4 Pro. I mean, the thing with mine, there's nothing on it. It's just, it's just white. There's no other logos. There's no other indication of anything else. No special edition mark other than white. And I, it, it's not like... It's not a glossy white, and so it's kind of flat. So it, I mean, yeah, it, it doesn't match your black entertainment stuff. But I mean, it sits out on my TV stand beside my uh, receiver, and it doesn't really stick out oddly to me. But it's it's my gaming piece. It's my it's my gaming thing, so it's not going to stick out to me. If anyone's got a problem right. with that, they get the fuck out of my house. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? Damn. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm I'm not terribly impressed by it. Um, yeah. I, I've never been a huge fan of translucent stuff, anyways. I mean, the last one that I remember kind of thinking, "Oh, this is pretty cool," was the old Nintendo 64 controller that was translucent. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's you know? definitely then, one of the more memorable yeah, items. That and then I had uh, I had a Game Boy Color that was translucent. Yes, <laughs> same here, same here. I remember those. <laughs> I think Game Boy Advance uh, also had translucent ones. I I don't know, maybe, but. Yeah, beyond that, I mean, uh, like like you said, as an adult, you know, there's just certain things that'll 
stick out a little more or whatever. And this one, as, as Uber did say, is more subtle. But, you know, if, if you're going to get a special edition of something, do you want it to be subtle? Because, yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't. The, God, know, the God of War one looked fucking badass. That's the one yeah, I wish I, yeah, wish I had. True. Was yeah. a God of War yeah. one, but yeah, I agree. Right. So I I don't know. I'm not terribly impressed by this super limited edition run. You know, it 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 looks you know a little cool, but not something I could I could see myself getting. And unless you know my PS4 died and I went to the store and this was like the last one, you know, yeah, I'd buy it, <laughs> but I wouldn't seek this thing out. I'm just not that impressed. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's hit these last two topics as quick as we can. We're at the hour mark now, so um, Uber, talk to us about some system requirements. Yes, I'll be quick on this one. Um, so, Call of Duty Black Ops Four, the beta, I think, just launched this past weekend, and I have the uh, minimum system requirements. Not only that, you, first things first, you, you're gonna need a Battle.net account if you don't already have one. Just uh, just like Fallout 76, which we just talked about, uh, Black Ops 4 will not be on Steam. So you're going to have to sign up for a Battle.net account. No, I won't. Um, <laughs> or, you, or you just don't do it altogether. You just, <laughs> just avoid it altogether. Uh, your minimum system requirements for PC to be able to play Black Ops 4 is going to be a Windows 7. I'm just going to read it off here. Windows 7, 64-bit or later. Uh, you are going to need a, an Intel i5 or AMD equivalent. You're going to need 8 gigs of RAM, 25 gigs of hard drive space, which surprisingly small. I thought it was going to be in the 40 gig range. Um, and you're going to need an NVIDIA uh, GeForce GTX 660, 2 gigabytes, or a GTX 1050, 2 gigabytes, or an AMD Radeon HD 7850 to run this game so um pretty, pretty you big missed, you missed it's an i5 2500 k or amd equivalent you didn't add the oh 2, yes 500K. the thing the that pisses me off and this is why didn't they list what the amd equivalent is they know what the fucking amd equivalent is to a i5 2500k why do they still yeah. use that amd equivalent <laughs> shit it's right. lazy fucking lazy that's probably like... get money from <laughs> intel to do that probably <laughs> right now, now they want you to use an i7 4770k, 12 gigs of RAM, again 25 gigs of hard drive space, and uh, they prefer you to use a GTX 1060 6 gig or a Radeon R9 390. Um, that would be the recommended setting. So you, you're gonna need a pretty good system to run Black Ops 4. But I'd, re I'd I'd imagine most of these games that are gonna come out later this year and into next year are gonna probably be up to par with these requirements right that's what we're kind of seeing well i recently well my gaming pc is not that old i mean my video card is no problem it's a 1066 gig but i have a ryzen 3 and um a little off topic of black ops but me and baker played the hunt showdown the minimum requirements was my ryzen 3 1200 cpu and i had to turn everything off and turn it to fucking low to get anywhere over a fucking steady 30 frames yeah, wow. And that's a, that's an early access game, so the optimization might not be there. But their minimum requirement is a Ryzen three. So mm -hmm. I'm already looking. Unfortunately, it's only it's not even been a full year yet, and I'm looking at upgrading at least my CPU. Wow. Yeah. So and I'm also gonna jump to jump the gun and go with another eight gigs. I'm going up to sixteen gigs of RAM as well. So it's like I've been waiting. I've been just like, well, I'd like to have the faster for editing, but then it's like, well, I'm gonna need it for fucking gaming now. Like that's ridiculous. Yeah, but um, you're lucky that you only have to update those things. Yeah, you know? because of, like it, I said, I, I whenever I built mine, I kind of future proofed, expecting down the road to upgrade to like a Ryzen five five or a Ryzen seven down the road. So, yeah, I mean, my board will definitely take one of the new um, the second gen i five twenty six hundred that I'm looking at. It'll definitely take it. I've already researched it, but yeah, it sucks. The price is two hundred ninety bucks. <laughs> That's, that's the price of PC gaming, though. Yeah. yeah. Well, we, we I, always I talked about that. Just, just for shits and giggles, I looked up um, Battlefield Five, and they said if your PC will run Battlefield One, Battlefield Five shouldn't be a problem. So I looked up Anthem because that's coming out with that Origin pre Premium next year, or Premier next yeah. year. An i7 or a Ryzen Seven is recommended. I'm thinking, wow. holy shit! 
an eight core CPU is either recommended now. Like, damn, they're pushing the limits with that game. And it's not even, like, there's not even a beta or an alpha in sight. The game doesn't come out until February. They're already listed that you're going to need a $400 CPU to play the game. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Damn. I'm like, well, that's, that's recommended. That's not minimum, but still, that's pretty hefty. Right. Yeah. And then, uh, Uber, there was one more thing attached to that as well, right? Hmm. <laughs> you didn't notice it. No, I didn't. did not notice that. No. The uh, the PUBG system requirements, they which are oh, fucking no. outrageous. For... I'm gonna yeah. say that right now. <laughs> no shit. Oh yeah, there it is. PUBG <laughs> system requirements. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let's take a look at that. This is for 60 frames per second. Yeah. Go to the recommended. Yeah. Yeah. You <laughs> are going to need. Okay, minimum. Let's go to the recommended here. Uh, 64 bit Windows 10. You're going to need a Ryzen 5 1600 or an i5 Intel i5 7600K. Wow. 8 gigs of RAM, and you're going to need an NVIDIA GTX 1060, 6 gigabytes or better yeah. um, to run it in 60 FPS. Wow. Really? Yeah, that's some hefty. To me, PUBG is not even that graphically like intense. I don't well, know, I mean, maybe. that. that... That it's not I, already. it's just it's just i think that it's poorly optimized right now i think i'm i'm gotta yeah. i've gotta wonder how big of a difference their uh fixed pub g campaign is going to be because optimization is one of the biggest complaints well their their minimum requirements um like it's such a big jump between their minimum yeah. to their recommended it's a pretty big jump especially in video card the video card is a gtx 962 2 gig or a Radeon R7 372 gig up to a 1066 gig, which is like the, the third top video card that fucking NVIDIA sells. Like that's a huge fucking jump in video card and right. a huge jump in processor as well. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, there's definitely some optimization issues still going on with PUBG. But yeah, I figured those two stories should go together considering they're both talking system requirements. But damn. <laughs> Gonna, yeah, this, this podcast gonna start making me some money. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we ever get paid from these companies for all the ideas that we I give know. them, then shit, That's right? Fuckers. I bet you Uber's already getting paid by Epic. That's why he has so many <laughs> Fortnite stories in this podcast every uh, fucking week. He's a plant. <laughs> uh, fuck. Shit. All right, so we're gonna move on to the last topic of the night here. We're at uh, an hour and twelve minutes currently. Um, so the last one we're going to do for tonight is God of War New Game Plus. That launches on August 20th, so a week as of uh, this recording. It's a week from now. So basically, you can play through the game, and then if you want to start it over and play it through it again, maybe at a harder difficulty, then um, you get to keep everything that you've done. Um, all of your skills, experience, uh, leveling up, your... Um, your armor and weapons, everything like that, you get to keep it all, and you can go through the game once more with a fully kitted Kratos, which is pretty cool, you know. But I, I have to wonder, you know, why this isn't just standard for single-player games nowadays? Because this this really is an awesome thing. But I mean, it, I'm just curious, like again, why this isn't more prevalent? Because it's a great idea. Yeah, why did this take so long to actually be implemented? Why wasn't this a day one thing? You know, it, it doesn't seem like it's that task intensive. Or, yeah, or even like a, yeah, like a three month thing. I mean, give people time, two month thing. Give people time to beat the game before they need to play it again. But yeah, yeah, it's it's odd that it wasn't, you know, included a lot sooner. Same as photo mode. Like, why isn't photo mode an automatic thing now? Considering, you know, it's it's every every game now all the fans want photo mode like right off the bat. So, I mean, they did implement it pretty quick with this one, but why isn't it, you know, day one, but I guess I'd rather work on the game, make the game awesome before they add photo mode. But yeah, yeah, it's the same thing or anything else. But I mean, it's, it's, um, I know the question was asked of insomniac, um, for regarding Spider-Man and they said, yeah, we, we kind of like the Kings, of the photo mode, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> so like I, I'm figuring photo mode's gonna be included day one with Spider Man, but yeah the um, the inclusion of uh, New Game Plus maybe I'll go back and I'll take my fully critted kid critted uh, kitted of Kratos and I'll play the lowest level. That'd be super easy. <laughs> Just one kill everything. Right. Yeah. 
Kratos would be the one hitter quarter. Yep. <laughs> Shit. So yeah, I mean that's coming August twentieth. Uh, really, nothing else more to say about that great game and uh probably some fun to revisit with all your old shit mm -hmm. so if you feel like going and scratching that itch once more because it's probably going to be years again before we see another god of war game uh you know at any time after august 20th boot it up and download the update and then you should have the option to do so so that's going to go ahead and do it for our uh, special part two of the podcast this week and uh, still didn't get to everything, but we were pretty damn close. Yeah, we're almost caught up here. Yeah. <laughs> so some of these are probably going to be revisited next week. Um, you know, usually we take some leftovers and pick out of the barrel from stuff that's still relevant. So uh, maybe we'll get to those next week. But as always, everything will be listed in the uh, description of the YouTube video for all of the stuff that we talked about and all the links to the videos and articles. Um, of course, if you guys uh, listen to this on SoundCloud, it'll be up there shortly. And um, if you guys don't follow us on Twitter on all of our individual handles, that'll be in the description as well. So in closing, and once again, thank you guys so much for listening to us and from everybody here at Beyond the Controller. We'll see you next time. <laughs>